Restarts on TIG welding carbon steel are relatively easy. What I do is just light up right there around the center of the crater, increase amperage until the puddle grows to the width where I left off, and then I just motor on. That's just what I do. Some people back up a ripple or two after they get it heated up. Sometimes I do that too, depending on if I'm wrapping a corner. But we'll show it again on each joint, so you'll get a chance to see plenty of restarts. Coming up to the end here, I'm keeping a real close eye on that puddle and backing off the amperage a little bit and tapering off amperage and bringing that puddle back in. Again, that's just the way I do it, many different ways. And so next will be the lap joint and we'll do a restart there too. So it's really the same exact thing. I will light up really close to the very center of that crater. Light up, increase amperage fairly quickly, no more than three seconds. You see I backed up a ripple there. I don't know why. I just, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It felt like it needed it. When you're learning to TIG weld, I think practicing restarts is a really good idea. Like on a joint like this, just running no more than an inch at a time and then practice, practicing a restart and getting to where you kind of can't tell where you stopped and started is a great exercise for when you're learning to TIG weld. Because when you can do a restart without any problem, then when your torch angle gets bad or you're just uncomfortable or you have to sneeze, then you're not hesitant to stop because you know you can make a good restart. Even though I'm not going to restart here, I'm just in the habit of holding that post flow until it times out. All right, well, let's do that last half of the T-joint now and take a close look at that restart. Same thing. I'm just growing the puddle to where it matches the width, flowing it down into the root, and motoring on. I'm noticing while I'm editing this video that I am dabbing or adding filler wire roughly once per second. That's generally a pretty good rule of thumb, especially it's just an average travel speed. If you were doing a thousand parts where you were welding like this, you'd probably pick that travel speed up as you got more and more comfortable. But about once per second is a good starting point. You get to where you can do it maybe twice per second and really speed up your travel speed. But you work on quality first and speed second. It's a good rule of thumb. This is a standard number eight cup, standard collet body that comes with most air-cooled 17 style torches. The most common torch out there that comes with say a 200 amp machine. This is sped up four times, but I'm just showing you with a 7 16 stick out at 20 CFH results are less than perfect. It's gray, the puddle swam around on me, it got oxidized. Same stick out, went to a stubby gas lens, number eight cup, same gas, way, way better. You can also stick a, a Jazzy 10 ceramic onto a stubby gas lens, same gas flow, same stick out, and get even better results. And that's why I almost always use a stubby gas lens setup with either an 8 cup or something larger like a Furic ceramic cup instead of the standard ones. My TIG cup situation can get out of hand pretty quick. My problem is I don't always put things back before I move on to the next video. So I'm going to try to take my own advice, use my own product, and work out of this kit from now on. This is a TIG Pro kit. It's like a Swiss Army knife, a cup for every situation. Here's a quick breakdown of the cups that come in the TIG Pro kit, as well as some good tight arc shots of each one. This Furic gas lens with an O-ring groove lets you use both clear cups and ceramic cups. A 17 style torch with the long end cap is almost 8 inches long. It's just okay for working on the bench. This is much nicer. Not only does it help you get in tight spots, but it also gives way better shielding and lights everything up and helps you see better. That's a big plus for me because my eyes aren't 23 years old anymore. The Jazzy 10 Ceramic, one of my favorite cups for chromoly as well as stainless, lets you use a really long stick out, gives you really great shielding with hardly any more gas than a number 8 requires. If you need a little bit more gas with a little bit more stick out, 
and number 12 is great, both ceramic and clear. The clear 12 works exceptionally well on stainless steel and on aerospace weld tests. The standard number 5 with collet body works exceptionally well on aluminum joints in helping you get full penetration. The large diameter gas lens really works well for walking the cup. For a root pass, you might need a cup like a number 6 size, but you might need a larger size for a cover pass. You'll have them all right here. The BBW Clear, great for titanium, but not only for titanium. Things like Inconel and Stainless can really benefit too. Sometimes you need a small cup, like on a Saturday when you're trying to get a job finished and the welding supply is closed. A number 4 cup is great for flash tacking with a low gas flow. A number 5 cup for full penetration aluminum welds. A number six is great for fillet welds on carbon steel, especially for walking the cup like this. I personally like to use a number six as an all-around cup for aluminum. A number seven cup is a great all-around cup for steel, lets you use a little bit longer stick out. A number eight is great for stainless steel. You'll see me working out of this kit in several videos going forward. All you need to do is select the right kit for your torch. The link will be around here somewhere to take you right to the TIG Pro Kit page. If you can't find it, just go to weldmonger.com. You'll see it right there.